we'll now specify the characteristics of the remaining components of the proposed case power system, the photovoltaic array and the genset. The latter, of course, being responsible for providing power to the load and to charge the battery during those rare extended periods when there's very little sunshine. So if we look at our system again, the principal provider of power or of energy, electrical energy, is the base load power system, which is this photovoltaic array here. We're going to assume that it's a fixed array, meaning it doesn't track the location of the sun. So part of our job will, de will be to pick an appropriate orientation and tilt, which we'll do based on the uh, latitude of the site. We can assume that it's a polycrystalline silicon technology uh, that's sensitive only to light striking the front face, so it's unifacial rather than bifacial where you can also get some uh, electricity out of reflected sunlight striking the rear face of the PV array. We're going to need to size the array for acceptable generator runtime and we'll see in a moment that uh, there is some information about what we should target in terms of the generator runtime. And for the initial and operation and maintenance costs of this photovoltaic system, we will use the RET screen database. Now the so-called peak load power system is this genset. It's what provides power when the base load power system is insufficient to keep the battery at a reasonable state of charge and supply the load. So periods of days when there's very little sunshine. For the initial costs of this genset, we will use RETScreen's database. For the operation and maintenance, we will assume that if the generator is really used very rarely, say 250 hours per year or less, then it's 100,000 quatcha per year. So that then gives us some guidance for how we should size the photovoltaic system. We want the generator to be running about 250 hours per year or less. If you think about 250 hours per year over 8,760, uh, you suggest that if the genset is 150 kilowatts, which would make sense, then it can provide the full load, then it's going to need to run less than 3% of the year. Uh, however, I'm going to maybe target 1 to 2%. Why? Because the photovoltaic system will degrade over time, so we don't want in, say, 10 or 15 years to be exceeding this 250 hours per year uh, threshold. So pause the video, attempt to complete the base load photovoltaic page and the peak load system, and uh, then you can unpause it to see the solution. So now for the proposed case, we start by specifying the baseload photovoltaic system. Uh, Red screen's assumption is that it's a fixed array, not a tracking array. That works for us. Uh, we would like it actually to face north. Why? Because if we go back to the location page, just to remind you, we're in the southern hemisphere. So generally speaking, it would make sense for the array to face north. The azimuth is how we specify this, and we can see that actually the convention adopted in red screen is that north is 180 degrees. So we'll put in 180 for the azimuth here, and then for the slope, we will want to have uh, a slope that's roughly equal to the latitude. So going back to the location page, we see the latitude is around 15 degrees. Uh, I'm not going to include the negative there, so I'll put in 15 degrees. And if you're wondering how I got that, you can look at help here and you can see that uh, equal to the absolute value of the latitude of the site, this is the slope which in general maximizes the annual solar radiation in the plane of the solar collector. Uh, this is adequate for systems working year-round. That makes sense here in Zambia because we're fairly close to the equator so there isn't a great deal of seasonal variation. So it's a reasonable starting point here. Next we go here and indicate that this is polysilicon technology. The power capacity is something we're going to have to guess. Remember, we want to have enough photovoltaic capacity to satisfy at least 97% of the load over the course of the year 
and I'm going to actually target 98 to 99 percent. For the efficiency, I will assume 20 percent here. All it affects is the solar collector area, and I'm going to assume we have enough space on the ground for this. For the bifacial cell adjustment factor, I'm going to put that at zero because we're using unifacial uh, technology. That's our assumption. Uh, we'll leave maximum PowerPoint tracking here. For miscellaneous losses, I'll assume 10 percent here. So now we just have to put in test a value here and see whether uh, we can satisfy 97 percent of the load with that value and if not change the value. So I'll start off with say 100 kilowatts here. So I put in 100 kilowatts and see that that satisfies 75 percent of the load. I'll just go up here to see fraction of load delivered. There's the monthly values in no month is it being fully satisfied over the course of the year it's satisfying 75 percent of it. Uh, so we want to see at least 97 and I'm going to go 98, 99 to account for degradation of the photovoltaic modules over time so let's try something bigger. I'm going to try 150 here and that would actually be you know big enough here um, so I'll leave that at 150 there. And then we need to specify the initial costs. So for the initial costs, I'm going to go here. And you'll see that that does include the inverter for either roof or ground mount. So it seems like a reasonable first choice. Of course, if you have better information, use it. But if you don't, this is a first approximation you can use. We'll paste that in here and we have the cost of the inverter of the photovoltaic system including inverter there. So I'm going to take that value and I am going to put it right into the cost page here. Now for the O&M costs, I can use the database again. I will accept the suggestion here. Once again, if you think that's incorrect, use uh, um, a better value, what you consider to be a better value. Now you'll note that there's this warning here that the peak system is required. That's because we're only satisfying 98.1 percent of the load. So I'm going to go to peak load power system here and I am going to indicate that it is a reciprocating engine running on diesel. There's the cost of diesel fuel from the electricity and fuels page. For the charger efficiency, uh, this is for converting AC to DC. I'm going to put in 100%. Why? Because that's part of the bi bidirectional converter uh, that we've already included as part of the battery system. So I'll put in 100% there. And then for the capacity, we will assume it's 150 kilowatts so that if the PV system is down for any reason, it can satisfy the full peak load. The warning sign here went away when we did that. For the heat rate, we are going to start off by using the lower heating value of typical heat rates for reciprocating engines. We see somewhere around 12,000 kilojoules of fuel energy in order to generate one kilowatt hour of electrical energy is a reasonable starting point. So I'll put that in. And then for the initial costs here, I will go to the cost database and I will pick this cost here from the cost database, paste that in, copy that value over to the cost page here. So there are the initial costs of our photovoltaic plus battery plus genset system. Our estimate is 18 million uh, quacha. So a relatively expensive system. We need to now specify the O&M costs or savings for this reciprocating engine. These will obviously be the costs. We were told that if we can keep runtime to less than 250 hours per year, um, we can assume that the cost will be kind of fixed at 100,000 quacha 
of preventative maintenance per year. So we'll put that in. We still have some costs to include. We'll do that in the next section. These will be the costs for the grid extension and for battery replacement in the proposed case.